Liam is a Jedi Knight. His costume is all handmade by his grandma and his mom. He enjoys wearing it as much as possible. May the Force be with you. His favorite aspects are the belt and the lightsaber. is Nathan Merrifield, age 13. Mercury. Mercury is the patron of oratory and wit of boundaries and the travelers that cross them, of commerce in general, merchants and thieves. Swift and sure, he delivers news of the gods to mortals, protects travelers, leads the dead to the underworld, watches over the flow of commerce. Basically, he runs around a lot, so it's a good thing he has wings on his sandals. Mercury offers his blessing to you all. May you travel soon and get really good deals in the vendors' hall. That is Mercury or Hermes, Messenger of the Gods. Okay, tonight we have some special guests. I still can't believe we actually have them here. Straight from Cybertron, the Transformers. Please give it up for Optimus Prime, Bumblebee Sidesweep, RC Wheelback, and Wheel. I'll have you for a second. The Ghostbusters of Alberta, the Ghostbusters of Victoria, and the Ghostbusters of DC. Mark Terabane, who is Bob 139-3816, Lunar Janitor. There's a whole lot of dust up there, and someone has to sweep it. Judges, that took about 25 hours. And the bubble helmet is his favorite aspect. That is Bob 139-3816. Our next contestant is Brenda Terabay. This is Lady Rulee, High Empress of the Known Galaxy, over the Empresses of the Galactic Clusters, over the Queens of the Galaxies, over the Governesses of the Solar System. She originates from the Leo Cluster, and head of the fun of, heard of the fun of Nikon and decided to come and see for herself. Woo! Okay, the next costume is Quandry. Inspired by the online game World of Warcraft, this costume demonstrates what it looks like when you become a Death Knight initiate. Wow! A Death Knight is conventional who died, who was brought back to life, mostly. All Death Knights begin with gray colors, some very basic armor, and a purple cloak. This costume took approximately four months of weekends. Her favorite aspect is wearing it. <laughs> That's quandary. Our <laughs> next contestant is Devona Struthers. She is Madame Red from the anime Kuro Shitsuji, she explains. Was it a good idea to send him off to Phantom Hive Manor for the next few days? Sebastian is a hell of a butler, but I wonder if he can even teach poor Rel how to properly perform his duties. For tonight, she will have to make do and rush to her party. Oh, she does hope she's not too late. This is Madam Red. Thank you. Our next costume is Christine Weston. As a Klingon woman from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. The dress is a composite of two dresses that she saw online. It's a simple wraparound style with a contrasting piping around the neckline and down the front. 
The wig and head bumps took the longest to make. The actual time is hard to say because she did the work in many short increments, about 11 hours. Her favorite aspect is the wig. It was very challenging. There's Christine Weston. Our next custom, our contestant is Adam Tatelman. Inspired by the video game series Assassin's Creed, Altair is an assassin who fought the Knights Templar during the Crusades of 1191. Trained to hide amid the crowds, Altair seeks his next target of Vicon, and it could be any one of you. <laughs> Nothing is true, and everything is permitted. This is our creed. Our next contestants are Kyle Ferret and Leah B. Hayworth. Their costumes are inspired by the online game League of Legends, which is a PvP tower defense in which a player controls a hero and fights his way to the enemy base and destroys it. They are representing two characters from the game. The costumes are made entirely out of dollar store and value village items, except the fur. They've been pinned, sewn, and hot glued together in very near 15 hours of work. Ezreal is the frosted one, and Kitty Cat. Our next contestant is Dylan White. The personified Russia, ever watching all the countries, keeping an eye on the activities of the nuclear revolution. Character's name is Russia Hetalia, about one and a half hours of construction. His favorite aspect is the hat. Woo! The real fur hat made the historic way. Woo! Russia has tailed you. The next contestant is Drahoo. Wibbly, wobbly, timey, whiny, staff. Characters are the 9th, 10th, 11th Doctor, Rose, and Atardis. I don't know why they're coming in this late. I always thought who was on first. Yeah. Okay, the next contestant is the Amor brothers, Phil oh. and Colin. They are coming in as the Double A Pirate Brothers. In a post-apocalyptic world, two brothers form a powerful alliance to survive the wastelands. One an adventure gentleman, the other a military engineer. Attempting to find a new life has proved insane, but terribly fun. Assassin. In the times of past, there were those who oppressed, and then there were those who fought the oppression. As the military arm of the Vatican, the Knights Templar wielded almost unlimited power while acting in the name of the Pope. Ostensibly formed to safeguard pilgrims on their way to the Holy Land, certain individuals used their position and power for their own ends. Assassin took approximately 130 hours to complete. 
His favorite aspect is the wrist, wrist blade, all made by John Klinger. The Templar, over 100 hours to do the chain mail, made by hand, as well as the majority of the costume. Favorite aspect is the handmade knitted chain mail, over 27,000 rings, 42 pounds. Yeah. The next contestant is Emma Jo, who is Sam from Princess Mononoke. Oh. Sam is a character from the Studio Ghibli film Princess Mononoke. Sam is an orphaned human child raised by a wolf god. Approximate time 20 hours. Favorite aspect of the costume is the mask. The next contestant is Florence Joe as the Baroness. Handmade hemp art bands and the rest of the costume was made from thrifted materials. Her favorite item in the costume is her boots. Next, we have Amy Dolphin as Agatha Heterodyne. A replica of the Girl Genius Paper Dolls. The corset itself required 42 pieces of fabric, not including the piping. Approximate time, 58 hours. Designed the corset from scratch, and all clothing items were made by her. Her favorite aspects of the costume are the corset and the boots. Our next contestant is Matt Siegel as a wandering mechanic. <laughs> Inspired by steampunk fashion and Team Fortress 2, the wandering mechanic travels the land searching for airships to fix with his gun by his side and a sad tune in his heart. He works for cash, so don't cross him or you'll regret it. Our next contestant is Janice Murphy as Lady Sold. Lady is sold to Kelp in her medieval court clothing. Her dress is made of cotton brocade that simulates silk brocade, lined in pale blue, crinkled polyester to re replicate silk. The overgown has open cut work cuts drop sleeves and a cross lace front. This gown is worn with a matching drawstring string pouch and mask. That mask is enhanced with ostrich feathers and lace ties. Janice takes commissions. <laughs> Six hours of work. Favorite aspect is the overgrown fabric with its crosses and many subtle background colors. Our next contestant is Mark Chark, who is nature, who's wearing nature armor. This is a handmade 12 ounce water hardened leather over 150 hours of construction. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we have Angela Arrow as Petrina. Katrina is an orphan and a student at the university. An archer and a dual-handed sword fighter, she is part of an elite group, the last line of defense for Akronon. The wall that surrounds the city is weakening, exposing the citizens to the threat of enemy invasion. With no army, their only hope is that the university can protect them. Okay, we have one more contestant, that's Mar Marissa Flesh. Uh, sorry, Fisher, uh, as Lieutenant J.G. Wendelin Delee Murdell, a Betazoid counselor on Stardate 204A, Centauri Station in the Stardate 24110.02. Her first post after the Academy was Chief Counselor on the New Stellarton Penal Colony. Upon leaving her post there, she was pulled into a random singularity by Q and brought forward seven years. After some confusion over her identity after being MIA so long, she was accepted to her new and current post. She has come here in search of her lost cat, Spot, named after Data's cat, which Q has a habit of either misplacing or mysteriously turning into a tiger for her. 
If you should see either a domestic short-haired cat or a live tiger, don't be alarmed. Spot is quite tame in either form. Spot sometimes responds to the sound of music, so Delie is hoping her thumb piano, although quiet, might lure her back to her. As Lieutenant J.G. Delie Murdell, Beta Zoe Counselor, 